The Lord be with you. And also with you. My name is Mark Howell and I'm Archdeacon of Blackburn and as a fellow member of Mother's Union it's a great pleasure to welcome you here to Worley Abbey as we celebrate our Mary Sumner Day uh, service. Uh, later in the service you'll hear from uh, Philip North, Bishop of Burnley, who is going to give the address. But first of all we have a sentence from Scripture. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying to me, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. And so we say together Mary Sumner's personal prayer. All this day, O Lord, let me touch as many lives as possible for thee, and every life I touch, do thou by thy Spirit quicken, whether through the word I speak, the prayer I breathe, or the life I live. Amen. God the Father, creator of heaven and earth, have mercy on us. God the Son, Redeemer of the world. Have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, the Sanctifier. Have mercy on us. And the Collect for Mary Sumner Day. Faithful and loving God, who called Mary Sumner to strive for the renewal of family life, give us the gift of your Holy Spirit, that through word, prayer and deed, your family may be strengthened and your people served. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Amen. Our first hymn, God is working his purpose out as year succeeds to year.
The first reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 43, beginning at verse 18. Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing, now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honour me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the desert and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. A reading from Mark chapter 1, verses 35 to 45. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him, when they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. And he answered, Let us go on to the neighbouring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues, and casting out demons. A leper came to him, begging him, and kneeling, he said to him, if you choose, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I do choose, be made clean. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was made clean. After sternly warning him, he sent him away at once, saying to him, See that you say nothing to anyone. But go, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded, as a testimony to them. But he went out and began to proclaim it freely, and to spread the word, so that Jesus could no longer go into a town openly, but stayed out in the country, and people came to him from every quarter. Hello, it's lovely to be with my fellow Mothers' Union members as once again we celebrate Mary Sumner Day, thinking today about our theme, Rebuilding Hope and Confidence, New Beginnings. I remember some years ago taking a godson to one of these great big, huge, spangly toy shops in London. It was the most amazing place on lots of floors with all the kind of brightly coloured plastic you can imagine. There was Lego there, there were superheroes, there was hula hoops and there was yo-yos, there was everything you could possibly ever want to play with. And this boy simply couldn't believe his eyes. The result was he couldn't settle on anything. He couldn't stay in one place for more than a second. He found one thing he was excited by. The moment he got there, his eyes went off in another direction. He went over there, just went dashing around the shop from place to place, so excited he could hardly believe what he was seeing or what he was doing. He had to keep on moving to the next thing. Now, I suspect, this may be a heresy, but I suspect that Jesus was a little bit like that godson in that toy shop. It seems to me from reading the Gospels that Jesus could never settle in one place for any length of time at all. He was always moving on to the next thing, travelling to the next village, moving to the next place, going from one place to another. It must have driven Mary and the disciples absolutely bonkers, because let's face it, most of us want fairly static, stable lives. So imagine trying to follow Jesus around, just going off here and there and everywhere. The moment you think he's settled, he moves on again. The Gospel that we've just listened to from uh, chapter 1 of Mark's Gospel is a very good case in point. This is the start of Jesus' public ministry by the Sea of Galilee. And very quickly the crowds are wowed by Jesus. They love him in these towns around the Galilee. He's healed the sick. He's taught them about the kingdom. He's cast out demons. He's transformed people's lives. He's done things they never thought were possible. And so these towns want Jesus back. Come back to us, they say. Ta come and show us more healings. Come and teach us again. They want Jesus to return. 
And that's what the disciples want too. They want Jesus to go back to the towns he's already visited. It's obvious, play to the galleries. It's like a comedian or an entertainer. It makes sense for them to go back to the towns where they're popular. That's what's lucrative for an entertainer. That's what you think would be fruitful for Jesus. Come on, Jesus, let's go back to the places we've been. But Jesus won't have that at all. He wakes up really early in the morning and he prays. He spends time with the Father. Well, after a bit, the disciples come and find him. Come on, Jesus, let's go back. Those towns are waiting for you, those places you visited. They want to see you again. But Jesus says, no, let's go someplace else. He wants to move on. Instead of going back to the place where he's loved, he moves on to the places where he's not even known. Because all must hear the good news. So what do we learn from Jesus' desperate desire to keep moving? We learn that the mission of the church is never static. The gospel moves us on. Earlier in my ministry, I worked in a big place of pilgrimage, a place called Walsingham. And whilst I was there, we built a whole new building. It meant raising three and a half million pounds and overseeing this incredibly complicated uh, uh, process as this new building was put up. It's a really stressful few years. Well, finally, the building was finished and I thought, oh, great, I can put my feet up now, relax and enjoy what's been achieved and take it easy. That day, the phone rang and a bishop rang me up, asking me to go back to a big, challenging urban parish. I remember talking to the Roman Catholic priest a few weeks after that and he just shrugged his shoulders and said, well, what do you expect? The mission always moves us on. And he's right. The gospel always moves us on. And that's not true, it's just true of priests, it's true, it's true of lay people. It's true whether you're three years old or 103 years old. God always calls us on to the next place, to the new thing, to the next challenge. That's why the Christian life is quite so exciting. And whilst that may not always mean a physical move, it may not literally mean going from place to place, it will mean a change of priorities a change of direction, a change of focus in our lives. The gospel does not do nostalgia. The gospel does not do fond reminiscence or looking back. The gospel moves us on. Why? Because all must hear the good news of the kingdom. Now, I think this is a particular challenge to us as churches right now. We're coming out of this pandemic. Restrictions are being removed. Church life as it once was is bit by bit being returned to us. And that gives a choice to every single local church. We could, on the one hand, look back. We could set as our main priority rebuilding our churches as they were before the pandemic trying to recover church life as it once was, trying to get back those people we fear we've lost, trying to make contact with the families we've not seen for a bit, trying to rebuild to where we were. But all that will do is deliver despondency. Everything has changed, you see. The church is forever changed by this pandemic and by what's happened as a result of it. So looking back will deliver only disappointment. Actually, we need to release ourselves from the past because there's an alternative to looking back and that's going on to the next thing because the gospel always moves us on. Don't get stuck reminiscing about what God asked you to do back then. Instead, as local churches, we need to look ahead to where God is at work now, to what God is doing next. And what's true of parish churches is true also of the Mother's Union. As we approach the end of this pandemic, every single Mother's Union branch needs to ask, what is God calling us to do next? Not what was God asking us to do before all this, not what was he asking us to do two years ago, because the gospel moves us on. We need to ask, what is God asking us to do next? What new beginning is he calling for from us? And how do we know? How do we answer that question? Well, I think this gospel contains two fascinating encounters, which will help us to understand 
what God is calling us to do next. The first is the encounter between Jesus and the Father. Early in the morning, Jesus makes serious time to pray. He goes away to a lonely place where he won't be distracted, where he can simply be in the Father's presence. If we want to know what new thing God wants from us, the first thing we need to do is pray, and pray sincerely. We need to go to that secret place where we will be undisturbed, where we can listen to the Father's will and hear where he's calling us to next. So make sure your branch makes serious time to pray, not just a few minutes knocked off at the beginning of the meeting, but proper time to pray. Maybe God wants you to spend a whole branch meeting doing nothing but praying, so you can listen to what new beginning he's asking you to make. So that's the first encounter between Jesus and the Father. The second fascinating encounter which helps us to answer our question is that between Jesus and the leper. The leper comes to Jesus and says, if you choose, you can make me clean. That that leper is crying out for Jesus. And that's where Jesus goes. He goes to the place where people are crying out for him. So as we ask, what next? What new beginning are we being asked to make? We need to listen out to where people are crying out for Jesus. That cry may come from families who are struggling. Family life is close to our heart as Mothers' Union members. And we know that this pandemic has been a really tough time for so many families in so many different ways. If that's the cry you're hearing, then find new ways to serve. Just last week here in my house, I had a family come to visit who are soon to go off for a week in the Mother's Union caravan up in Morecambe. Those children and that mother were so excited, I can't even describe. They could not believe what was happening. They didn't know where Morecambe was or quite what this caravan meant. They just knew they were going away and that meant the world to them because that's Mother's Union members finding new ways to serve. The cry may come from individuals who are lonely because so many have felt cut off, isolated by what's happened over this past year and a half. And if that's the cry you hear, then find new ways to invite. Perhaps put on new events as a Mother's Union branch, which will reach out to new people, to different demographics. Or that cry may come from people who are searching, people who are looking for purpose, for forgiveness, for something to make sense of their lives. If so, find new ways to share the good news of the gospel. As a diocese, we're calling on every parish church to start new local congregations, new ways midweek or other times of the week uh, where we can start new churches which reach out to new people. Wouldn't it be wonderful if every Mother's Union branch played its part in helping to start a new local congregation so that those who are searching can find the object of their desire in relationship with Jesus Christ. Where are you hear, hearing people crying out for Jesus? That's where he's asking you to make a new beginning. The gospel moves us on. That's what Jesus teaches us. That's what we see in, in the life of Jesus. That's what we see today as we come to the end of this pandemic. The gospel moves us on. It's a time of new beginnings. So ask yourself, as individual Christians, as Mother's Union members, as parish churches, ask yourself, what is God calling us to do next? The gospel moves us on. Amen. God of compassion, God with us, be with us in these times of uncertainty. Break into our lives, rekindle our hope and breathe love into our communities that we may find new ways of supporting and upholding one another, bearing witness to your inclusive love of family, friend, neighbour and stranger alike. May our love for those most vulnerable in our community become a beacon of hope for all. In faith, hope and love, in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. We're all walking the Emmaus Road now, moving from where we have been to where life is leading us. 
No matter how we experience or interpret what is happening now and what lies ahead, no matter how we may feel on a given day, what we can be assured of is that Christ is with us. We hope for a better day and pray for that day to come. For now, we are walking on the road. Take heart that you do not walk alone. Amen. And we will walk in hope and confidence, trusting each other, loving each other, and together we will rebuild the hope and confidence of families and communities everywhere, always reaching forward as God's hands and feet and reflecting a life filled with purpose and meaning, grace and love, peace and joy. Amen. In thankfulness for the life of Mary Sumner, Lord, we pray for the desire to love and serve you as she did. Spirit of the living God, hear our prayer. For families who live where there is war, oppression, injustice and poverty. Spirit of the living God, hear our prayer. For homes of peace and love, reflecting your love for us all. Spirit of the living God, hear our prayer. prayer. For wives, husbands and partners, that they may grow ever deeper in love for each other for grace to be able to forgive and be forgiven. Spirit of the living God, hear our prayer. For children to grow up to know and love you. Spirit of the living God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For families who at this time know the pain of COVID or any illness of body, mind or spirit. Spirit of the living God, Hear our prayer. For Mother's Union across the world, for courage, energy and a sense of adventure to fulfil its calling. Spirit of the living God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray in thanksgiving for all who have run the race and kept the faith. May we also share in your heavenly kingdom. Spirit of the living God, Hear our prayer. We pray the prayer Jesus taught us in the modern form. You may wish to join in in the traditional form. Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And together we pray our Mother's Union prayer. Loving Lord, Lord we thank you for your love so freely given to us all. We pray for families around the world. Bless the work of the Mother's Union as we seek to share your love through the encouragement, strengthening and support of marriage and family life. Empowered by your Spirit, may we be united in prayer and worship and in love and service reach out as your hands across the world in Jesus' name, Amen.
2021, we look back with gratitude and forward with faith. In prayer, we give thanks and pray for ongoing vision for the future of the Mother's Union worldwide. Jeremiah says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. I'm going to light this candle in memory of and with thanksgiving for the life of Mary Sumner. Now, the secret of the three pieces of wool I asked you to bring. The three strands will represent 145 years that the Mother's Union has been going. So 100 years too since Mary Sumner died. So a blue strand for Mary Sumner, white strand in mine for 145 years and the gold for our plans for the future. So if, hopefully if you've got your pieces of ribbon so you're going to knot them at the top. And if your fingers are like mine, they probably don't do very nice knots. As we weave this symbol of strength, a threefold plait, not easily broken, so we also weave our prayers of hope for a future made firm by being entwined with past vision and present service. And as we look forward with faith for all that is to come, help us to build a future together which will enable our work to flourish through far-reaching vision and commitment to your will. Amen. Loving Lord, we give you thanks for the far-reaching vision of our founder, Mary Sumner. We look back with gratitude and praise for her witness and for all that has been achieved thus far in the name of the Mother's Union worldwide. Amen. And you can use this plat as a memory of this service and to remind you of 145 years of the Mother's Union. To all my friends out there, I do hope that you're feeling uplifted by this service. It's a shame that we've needed to be virtual once again. But having said that, maybe this is a sign of Mother's Union in the future. Mother's Union rebuilding in hope and confidence. I do often wonder what Mary Sumner would think about how we've developed over the past hundred years since her death and about her reaction to the IMPC who have given so much joy to our elderly members during the same time. I've often joked about bringing Blackburn Diocese into the 21st century, little knowing that we would, like the proverbial month of March, come in like a lamb and go out like a lion or vice versa. Who knew back in 2016, even in 2019, what was in store for us? How our meetings would change? I'm sure that you will agree with me when I say there is a light at the end of the tunnel. It may be small, but our MU train is rapidly moving towards it. I recently attended a branch AGM, socially distanced of course a branch with a new leader and seven new members. It was wonderful to see the enthusiasm of these members as they volunteered to take on roles and make plans for the future. I also recently received information of another branch who have a member who has taken it upon herself to enthuse mums and grandmas at the church toddler group, asking them what they know about MU and would they like to join. She was surprised to know how little these people did know about our wonderful movement, so followed this through with a questionnaire, with room for suggestions of what they would like to know and what would persuade them to join. This is now going to be followed up with leaflets and discussions and hopefully a few new members for the branch in the near future. Some branches have met quite regularly on Zoom, while others have not been fortunate enough to do this. 
but branch leaders in the majority of cases have managed to keep up a good contact with the membership and I applaud you all for that. At a recent provincial meeting, we were told about a new initiative. Who do we think we are with plans for coffee mornings, with discussions about the way forward? By the time you hear this, I will already have been to my first one and be planning the next step forward. So watch this space. Even though we've had a stressful 18 months, it has given us the opportunity to reinvent ourselves. To leave behind old habits and to face the future with new beginnings, new ways and hopefully recruitment of new members. I leave you with this thought. Although we should always remember our five F's, our fellowship, our faith, our friendship, lots of fun and finally food. And on that note, although our re reputation for cakes goes before us, we should also try to take the tea out of catering, at least some of the time, because Mother's Union is about so much more than that. God bless you all. And could you, these next few days, please pray for Anne Edwards and Carol Jenkinson as they complete their marathon challenge over the next few days, starting tomorrow. Good luck, ladies. Thank you, Enid. And thank you to everyone who has taken part in this service today and joined in online. And now, before our final hymn, we pause for our closing prayer. Lord, we give thanks for the life of Mary Sumner, for her obedience to your calling, for her vision for the Mother's Union. We pray that through the grace of your Holy Spirit, may, we may receive renewed confidence and share that vision. And we give you thanks and praise for the many people around the world who reach out in the name of Mother's Union. Through our work, may we touch the lives of those we meet, that they too may know your love. Amen. Amen. God above us, give, give us, us faith. faith. Christ beside us, give, give us, us love. love. Spirit within us, give us hope. And now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you.